The anime starts by introducing us to a high school boy named Kamido. At first, it seems like he lives a typical and boring school life. However, things take an unusual turn when he's attacked by four big guys who look like American football players in the hallway. The boy is puzzled about why they tackled him and even more so about why they kidnapped him. After a while, they leave him on the sidewalk, and he is met by a girl named Miyuki, whom some might call a waifu. This girl, known as a waifu, tells him that she works for Japan's wealthiest families, and the entire place they're in is a secret location. That's why they had to kidnap him and bring him there blindfolded. She explains that the reason he's there is because her bosses want him to attend the local school, which is also called the Saiken Female School. So, yes, this boy is going to study at an all-girls school. Kamido mentions he didn't request this transfer, but Miyuki says it doesn't matter since she's just following orders. She also mentions he should be thankful because he'll receive the best education in Japan. Afterward, they introduce him to the school's director. She explains that they brought the boy to the school because they've noticed that the girls at that school face social challenges when they graduate and enter the outside world. It's a shock for them to interact with men after going through high school without any contact. So, they want the boy to be the only male in the high school, so the girls, known as Waifus, can have some interaction with men. You might wonder why they picked him specifically. Well, here's why, all the girls at the school are wealthy, and the main character is not. He's almost broke. That's one of the reasons they chose him, because he's from a different background, and they want the girls to get accustomed to dealing with people like him. Most of the people on the street are similar to him, but that's not the only reason. Miyuki, who is responsible for recruiting the main character, says the primary reason she chose him over other boys is because she thought he was attracted to other boys. She believed this would eliminate the risk of pregnancy. However, the boy corrects her, saying he's not attracted to men. In response, Miyuki warns him that if he actually likes women, she'll amputate his private parts to ensure no issues with their mission. The main character then pretends to be attracted to men to protect himself. Following this conversation, they take him to the classroom where his classes will begin, and he's warmly received by many girls. They're eager to meet him, partly because he's a boy and partly because he's not wealthy. He's what they call a commoner, someone who is not rich, more like lower middle class. In addition to introducing the main character, they also show them a cell phone, explaining that it's a device commonly used by regular people. Everyone is fascinated by it, treating it like a valuable treasure. Afterward, a girl with yellow hair named Ryaiko, who happens to be the class leader, decides to return the phone to the main character. However, she doesn't do it in the casual manner that commoners would. Instead, she places the phone in a gift box before returning it. As she's handing over the box, the boy accidentally touches her hand. This touch causes the yellow-haired girl to suddenly withdraw. In her place, another girl with orange hair appears and urgently asks the main character to kiss her. This might seem rushed, but it's because this girl, named Eka, believes that kissing a commoner will grant any wish, although that's not the reality. The main character, Kamido, corrects her misconception, explaining that her belief is not true. This helps Eka understand, and she stops insisting. Soon after, the rest of the girls arrive, and Eka leaves the scene. Eka doesn't interact with the other girls for an unknown reason. After a while, they take the boy to show him the room where he'll sleep. They've set it up to resemble his old room, even with some posters he tears down to pretend he's not interested in women. Instead, they give him a magazine featuring muscular guys. Miyuki informs the boy that she'll be his personal maid, as everyone in the school has one to take care of their needs. When Miyuki leaves, Eika enters to continue talking with the protagonist. It's revealed that Eika's wish when she tried to kiss him was to become popular. The protagonist advises her that she doesn't need a miracle for that, she should start by socializing more and not running away from her classmates. Even though her intentions are not to be disliked, her actions have that effect. She genuinely wants to be popular and have many friends. As a sign of his friendship, the protagonist gives her a video game to cheer her up. Seeing the protagonist's social skills, Eika expresses her desire for him to teach her everything she needs to know to be like a commoner. So, she decides to start a club with the protagonist, and it's called the Commoner's Club. It's just the two of them, but that still counts as a club. The main point is that the protagonist promised to teach her how commoners behave so that she can become more sociable and have many friends like him. The following morning, the protagonist wakes up for his first day at school, and he's surprised to find that Miyuki, his assigned maid, woke him up. She explains that it's customary for a maid to wake up their assigned person. After a while, she guides him out through the back door as he's like a celebrity, and they want to avoid drawing too much attention. However, they run into the orange-haired waifu, Eika, who keeps a close eye on the protagonist. Eika knows about the back exit because she often uses it to avoid her classmates while going to school. She takes this opportunity to carefully note down everything the protagonist says because she believes it's valuable information for her to learn how to be a commoner. Upon arriving at school, the protagonist is approached by Ryaiko, who informs him that she and the rest of the class have prepared a welcome party for him in the auditorium. 
She invites him to go, and Aka is also invited, but she's separated from the group as usual. However, the party is scheduled for the end of the school day, so first, they have to attend their classes. They start with language classes, then move on to sports. During sports, Aka struggles, while the boy excels. After finishing their classes for the day, the Waifus take the protagonist to the auditorium where the welcome party will be held. At the party, Miyuki decides to serve the protagonist a bowl of instant ramen, the kind that you can buy for a few cents in stores. Since it's considered food for commoners, the other Waifus are fascinated by it and start to admire it. However, out of curiosity, some of the more shameless waifus each take a small portion of the ramen, ultimately consuming what was meant for the boy. In the anime, they don't explicitly state it, but the inconsiderate ones left the protagonist without any food. The only one who didn't end up without food was Eika, as she saved a significant amount of it and ate it secretly on her own. During the party, the time for dancing arrived, but the main character confessed to Ryaiko that he didn't know how to dance to elegant songs. Instead, he suggested playing a Bad Bunny song, implying that they could dance with more intensity. While he may not have directly said this, he did express his unfamiliarity with elegant dancing. In response, Ryaiko offered to teach him. During their lesson, they practiced some dance steps, ultimately culminating in a spectacular performance. This marked the end of the party. Later on, we find the protagonist in his room, teaching Eika how to be a commoner. He starts by showing her how to read manga, but instead of making her more like a commoner, it turns her into an otaku. Eika, being quite innocent, believes that what she reads in the manga is inspired by real events. So, she begins to consider trying to stop time like the manga character did. What's worse is that the protagonist plays along with this idea. He encourages her to try the spell to stop time, even pretending to be paralyzed. Eika starts to believe the story and thinks she has frozen time. However, when she leans in to kiss him, he has to stop pretending and confess the truth. Sometime later, the blonde waifu is taking a bath, and she unexpectedly encounters the protagonist, who was also undressed. After that embarrassing encounter, the protagonist went to talk to Ryaiko in class, mainly to ease the tension. However, Ryaiko, having seen the protagonist without clothes, seems to be getting some romantic ideas. Suddenly, she starts talking about weddings and engagements. Yes, it appears that the waifu has developed feelings for him. At a later time, we move on to another day, and once again, the protagonist is woken up by Miyuki. She informs him that essentially, his family has not reported his disappearance because they accepted the school's deal, which involved receiving renovations to their home. After a while, the protagonist goes to his usual classes, and during recess, he notices a blue-haired girl acting strangely. To prevent any further embarrassment, the protagonist decides to take her to his room so that no one sees a naked girl in the courtyard. Out of the blue, the waifu suggests that the protagonist was the one who removed her clothes, even though it's clear that he didn't. Regardless, the protagonist doesn't want her to be without clothes, so he helps her get dressed. They discover that the girl's name is Hakua, and she mentions that she works in a laboratory. The protagonist offers her something to eat, and suddenly, Hakua falls asleep. But don't worry, she wakes up immediately and starts writing and undressing herself. It's quite perplexing because this girl behaves very strangely. Just then, Eika enters the room. To avoid further complications, the protagonist decides to take Hakua to the laboratory where she claimed to work. At the laboratory, it's revealed that Hakua is a child prodigy. At her young age, she's managed to create complex mathematical formulas. It appears that geniuses, like Einstein, can sometimes be a bit eccentric. The protagonist explains that he fed her ramen, which surprises the woman in charge of taking care of Hakua. She notes that Hakua typically doesn't accept food from anyone as she usually eats what's provided in the laboratory. The woman, intrigued by the change she saw in Hakua when she was with the protagonist, shares her observations with her colleagues. Meanwhile, the protagonist is at school and encounters a waifu named Karen, who carries a katana. Karen seems to have emerged from the sewer, and upon seeing the protagonist, she insults him and threatens to kill him. Karen is extremely aggressive and begins attacking the protagonist without apparent reason, other than calling him scum. During one of her attacks, she ends up disrobing everyone, realizing there's no other way to handle the situation. The protagonist decides to confront her, and during the confrontation, there's a small accident that causes Karen to briefly faint. After waking up, Karen acknowledges her defeat and expresses her willingness to become a disciple of the protagonist. As the protagonist continues to teach the orange-haired girl how to be a commoner, Hakua suddenly appears. After a while, Karen also enters the scene. It seems that ignoring Karen won't be as easy as they thought. Karen states that since she was defeated by the protagonist, she now belongs to him. She expresses her intention to stay with him and do whatever he says. Sometime later, Ryaiko and her group of waifus invite the protagonist to another party. However, this party is a bit unusual because Ryaiko mentions it will be held in her room. As the protagonist is about to accept the invitation, 
Aika appears and reminds him that he agreed to give her some commoner lessons. It's actually an excuse to interrupt his conversation with the Waifus. Outside, Aika tells him that the party in Ryaiko's room seems suspicious and advises him not to go. The protagonist decides to heed Aika's advice and informs Ryaiko that he won't be able to attend the party because he has something to do with Aika. Ryaiko seems content with this explanation. However, at the party, Ryaiko shares with her classmates her conviction that Aika is seeking advice from the protagonist on how to be a commoner. Ryaiko reveals that last time Aika went to visit the protagonist in his room, she overheard their conversation. She acts as a bit of a spy, unbeknownst to them. One of her friends suggests that the reason the protagonist and Aika lock themselves in their room is because they might have become a couple. This idea distresses Ryaiko, and she screams and insults her friend for even suggesting such a thing. After the protagonist heard Ryaiko scream and found out about her depression, he went to visit her. Ryaiko welcomed him but was visibly sad. When the protagonist returned to his room, he informed Aika about Ryaiko's state. Aika suggested holding a commoner event to cheer Ryaiko up and also to win the affection of the other waifus by organizing such an event. Sometime later, the protagonist presents the commoner event, which turns out to be an exhibition on how to be a commoner. The model in charge of the demonstration is Ryaiko, as she enjoys being the center of attention. Being the model for the event lifts her spirits, and she gets to share the limelight with the protagonist. For the event, Ryaiko dresses as a commoner, behaves like one, and takes the opportunity to apologize to the classmate she yelled at. This gesture brings happiness to everyone involved. At the end of the event, Ryaiko thanks the protagonist for making her feel better, but he insists that she should thank Aika, as it was her idea. The protagonist's intention is for Ryaiko and Aika to become friends. However, Ryaiko takes this poorly because she already believes that Aika and the protagonist are dating. Ryaiko rushes out to confront Aika, and when she finds her in the protagonist's room, she tells her that she hates her. Aika doesn't understand why Ryaiko is so upset, as Ryaiko should be grateful for the effort made to cheer her up. However, Ryaiko's belief that Eika is stealing the protagonist from her causes her to remain angry, and they start fighting. The two waifus end up fighting in front of the protagonist until he requests them to stop, prompting them to throw a pillow at his head. Fortunately, this action manages to bring an end to their quarrel. After some time, Ryaiko leaves, leaving the orange-haired waifu in the protagonist's bed. During this period, Karen and Haku arrive to submit applications to join the commoners club. Ryaiko also arrives at this moment to deliver her application. So, the club that initially started with just two people now has five members. Aika protests, stating that she won't allow Ryaiko to join the club because they have a history of not getting along. However, the protagonist suggests that by allowing Ryaiko into the club, they might have a chance to improve their relationship and possibly even become friends. Although they don't seem to agree at the moment, the next day, the protagonist wakes up and notices that Hakua is sleeping next to him, which is quite unusual because he had taken her to the laboratory the previous night. However, as we know, this girl has some peculiar quirks. To address her needs, the protagonist decides to prepare breakfast for both of them. While she helps him initially, it doesn't take long for her to become deeply engrossed in developing formulas, and in the process, she starts to undress. Apparently, taking off her clothes is something she does when she's very focused on thinking. After they've eaten and filled their bellies, they engage in conversation about somewhat dull topics. After a while, Kamido decides to take Hakua back to the laboratory, even though she wanted to stay in live with him. The protagonist understands that he can't be living with a minor, and it's the responsible thing to do. Meanwhile, Eika and Ryaiko, who are not supposed to get along, are now discussing Hakua's desire to stay with the main character. The situation has made them realize that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They are conspiring to take Hakua away from the protagonist. As for Karen, she's expressing a desire to harm the main character, which is quite concerning. It seems that Karen's aggressive tendencies are still present. Later, they waited for Hakua in Kamido's room and attempted to annoy her. However, Hakua didn't pay attention to their efforts. Instead, she started solving equations and eventually fell asleep. Despite their initial plan to push her away, they ended up joining her in the protagonist's bed, where they could relax and rest. The woman who takes care of Hakua later went looking for her, and Hakua mentioned that even though the protagonist wasn't there, she had fun with her new friends. In the end, despite their attempts to annoy her, the Waifus and Hakua seem to have formed a bond and became friends. Later, the protagonist comes home and starts playing a video game where the Waifu on the screen pretends to be his girlfriend. Eika enters and asks him why he is playing the game. The protagonist explains that a friend of his provides the voice for the character in the game, and he finds comfort in that voice. Eika immediately expresses her desire to meet the game character and becomes attached to her. Ryaiko enters and finds the protagonist gone, so she waits for him in the room. 
During their wait, Eika and Raiko start analyzing the things in the protagonist's room, beginning with his sleeves. They also explore the contents of his fridge and decide to have some soda. However, since they come from wealthy backgrounds and have never tried street soda before, when they feel the bubbles in their mouths, they spit out the soda, thinking it had expired or was spoiled. As a result, they end up wet and have to change into bathing suits. In their bathing suits, they start to argue and playfully fight when the protagonist returns and sees the awkward scene. Shocked by what he witnesses, he quickly runs away from the room. After some time, the director informs the protagonist that they have organized a trip for the Waifus to experience life in a commoner's environment. They board a plane and head to their destination, where they find a whole tourist attraction with typical elements of everyday life for ordinary people. The destination appears to be a replica of a normal city, but there are no real people there. This is because a real city would be too crowded, which could overwhelm the Waifus. The goal is to introduce them to things like traffic lights, pedestrian crossings, supermarkets, and restaurants. When they arrive at the restaurant, they are fascinated by the fact that common people have to wait in line to order food. They are also intrigued by the idea of ordering their own food, as they are usually pampered and never have to do such things. Ryaiko is the first to attempt ordering, but she struggles to communicate with the server. Her biggest challenge, however, comes when she has to decide what to order from the menu. The protagonist steps in to help her. The rest of the waifus also lack experience in ordering fast food, so they all end up ordering the same combo of hamburgers, fries, and soda. In the game room of the shopping center, the protagonist teaches them how to use the plushies machine to grab plushies. In the dance room, several waifus attempt to imitate the dance moves of Michael Jackson, including Aika. Aika realizes that she can overcome her stage fright as she dances remarkably well. The other waifus are impressed and ask her to teach them more about commoner culture. Since Aika has been receiving private lessons from the protagonist, she seizes her moment of glory to share what she's learned with the others. This allows her to pass on her knowledge about commoner culture and activities. At a clothing store, Karen is caught trying on a blouse, but she doesn't know how to pay for it. The protagonist advises her to go to the checkout, but Karen, misunderstanding, thinks the protagonist is challenging her to a duel. Knowing that Karen is not normal, the protagonist decides to play along. As Karen believes the protagonist is her owner, he takes advantage of the situation to order her to take off her clothes and try on the blouse she wants to buy. Later on, we see that Ryaiko and Eika have been paired up to stay in the same room. Eika is busy writing to her new friends and doesn't pay much attention. However, as Ryaiko is one of the most popular waifus in school, Eika eventually asks her for advice on how to talk to her friends and become even more popular. Meanwhile, Kamido meets Eika and tells her that since she has successfully made friends, there's no need for her to continue receiving lessons on how to be a commoner. He informs her that he intends to disband the commoners club, as Eika could use this time to join other clubs and spend more time with her new friends. Following this, the protagonist goes to the hotel pool, and there he encounters Eika. However, the situation takes an unexpected turn when Eika's friends arrive at the pool. The protagonist has to hide to avoid being seen by them. Unfortunately, he can't hold his breath forever and he eventually faints underwater. Aker rescues him from the water where he's unconscious and almost lifeless. In this dire situation, Aka has to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to revive him. Just at that moment, her friends reappear and witness Aka giving the protagonist mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. When Kamido regains consciousness, he finds himself back in his bed. He doesn't understand why the waifus are whispering behind his back as he was unaware of what happened. Eika informs him that the waifus believe he and she are dating because she gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. As they discuss this, Karen appears and delivers her usual slaps, which has become somewhat of a regular occurrence for her. Back at school, Eika confesses the truth about what happened between her and the protagonist to the waifus in the club. Upon learning that it's all a misunderstanding, Ryaiko is relieved and advises Eika to tell the truth to the protagonist. However, Eika decides to wait for the right moment, and this leads to an argument between them. It seems that such disputes have become somewhat normal for this group of waifus. Sometime later, Eika finds herself alone with the protagonist but instead of telling him the truth about what happened between them when he was unconscious, she dresses as a plant and pretends to be a branch. The other three waifus, however, enter and witness this peculiar and somewhat odd scene. Following this, the five of them go to the protagonist's room and use an app on his cell phone to predict their futures. When it's Karen's turn, the app humorously labels her as a little crazy, much to her displeasure. Karen takes the phone from the protagonist and decides to use a different app that matches people based on compatibility criteria. Ryaiko suggests they play with this app, hoping it might pair her with Kamido. Since they all want to know their compatibility with Kamido, they decide to start by testing Aika's compatibility with the protagonist. The result of this test shows a compatibility score of 80 out of 100, suggesting that Aika and the protagonist could be a very good couple. 
Eika is delighted by this result. Ryaiko is eager to see if she can get a higher score than her rival, Eika. When they do the compatibility test, Ryaiko and the protagonist score 90, indicating that they could potentially get married. Ryaiko is overjoyed, and her excitement rivals Eika's disappointment when she finds out the result. Next is Hakua's turn, and as expected, her compatibility with the protagonist is low, with a score of 50. It's clear that the app doesn't pair girls with older boys. Finally, it's Karen's turn. Initially, the app reports a compatibility score of 0 and warns that pairing Kamido with Karen could result in his death. However, it turns out there was a mistake, as the protagonist had entered the wrong ID number for Karen. When he corrects it, the app gives a score of 100, suggesting a perfect match between Kamido and Karen. Aika and Ryaiko are demanding to know the results, and Karen joins in the dispute. In response to the situation, the protagonist and Karen decide to leave and go eat ice cream, presumably to take a break from the heated debate and enjoy a more pleasant activity. Sometime later, the protagonist wakes up once again under Miyuki's watchful gaze. He expresses his boredom at seeing her every time he wakes up and asks her to stop. However, Miyuki insists that it's her duty to wake him up, so he'll have to continue dealing with her presence. After a while, the protagonist leaves his room and is attacked by a crazy Karen in the hallway. Karen nearly cuts off his arm in the attack, but the protagonist manages to dodge it, and his shirt is the only casualty. Seeing his torn shirt, Karen invites him into her room, supposedly to compensate him for the injury. Inside her room, Karen offers him tea and takes the opportunity to show him the blouse she bought with him in mind. She starts sewing his shirt, and the protagonist comments that, after living with her, he's realized she's not as crazy as she seems. He mentions that the app's prediction of her being a good wife might be true. This makes Karen blush, and she decides to remove his other flannel under the pretense of making repairs. Just as the other waifus arrive, Karen hides with the protagonist in a closet. However, the closet is too small, and they end up falling out of it, creating a rather confusing scene for the other waifus to witness. After a while, the five of them gather in the protagonist's room, feeling a bit calmer. They start engaging in some casual conversation and nonsense. During this time, the protagonist suggests the idea of dressing the waifus as servants. The four waifus listen to the protagonist's suggestion and decide to go along with it, pretending to be waitresses. The protagonist seizes the opportunity to order some food and instructs them on how they should act to take his order. It seems the protagonist was hungry and used the excuse of teaching them to be waitresses as a way to get them to cook him something to eat. Ryaiko starts singing with her terrible voice, causing significant damage to the entire auditorium. Haku is called in to clean up the mess. Later, the protagonist goes to the park, where one of the maids invites him to the laboratory. There, she shows him Hakua's work area, and the girl joins them. Together, they build a castle-like structure in the laboratory. After their activities, they all go to eat in the laboratory cafeteria. However, in the end, it's only the protagonist and the girl who eat, as the maids watch them with great excitement. The maids believe that there's something romantic going on between the protagonist and Hakua, even creating imaginary love stories in their heads. They even conspire to make sure the two end up together, and they serve their food with a romantic touch. The arrangement of the glass and straws indicates their playful involvement in this scheme. Miyuki, the boss of the maids, arrives, and everyone gets serious. The main character says goodbye and goes to their room. Later, the main character asks Eika to meet alone. Eika gets embarrassed and asks why. The main character doesn't say why but asks her to sit down and gives her a gift. When she opens it, it's a yellow outfit, and the main character says it will make her really popular in school. The main character shows her a picture of a very popular guy wearing the same yellow suit. The main character tells the girl that if she wears the suit and does the same greeting as he does, she'll become popular right away. This encourages her to put on the suit and start practicing the greeting. The main character notices she's having a hard time, so he teaches her the right way to do it. When he sees that she's gotten the hang of it, he's pleased. The protagonist encourages Eka to put on the yellow suit and rehearse the greeting he demonstrated. He teaches her the technique for the greeting, and she practices until she seems to have mastered it. Before Eka can confess that this won't make her popular, she leaves excited to put her newfound knowledge into practice. The protagonist tries to stop her, knowing she will likely be embarrassed in public. However, as he attempts to intervene, he accidentally collides with Miyuki. Eka ends up ahead of him, and Ryaiko, being very curious, begins to follow and question her about where she's going in such a hurry. Eika tells Ryaiko a fabricated story that Kamido confessed the commoner formula for popularity to her and taught her the special greeting. Ryaiko believes the story and becomes envious, crying. Eika decides to help Ryaiko learn the greeting in the style of dandy. They practice together, and once Ryaiko has learned it, she expresses her intention to tell the entire class. As Kamido continues searching for Eika, 
He discovers that all the waifus in the school are dressed in yellow and attempting the eccentric greeting. After this, Ryako overhears the main character talking on the phone, saying he wants to leave school because he misses his male friends. Alarmed, she goes to tell the other girls with the hope of finding a way to make the main character stay. Aika comes up with the idea of acting like men to try and prevent him from leaving. They decide to imitate the only man they know, which is Kamido, but since he has a simple personality, they can't think of any specific traits to replicate. They decide to repeat the phrase I like muscles, which they once heard Kamido say, to make it seem like they share a common interest with him. To fully embrace this, they decide to buy a suit with fake muscles, and Aika wins the opportunity to wear it. However, when Aika wears the suit, the others criticize her appearance as it doesn't quite suit her. The waifus, including Aika and Ryaiko, visit the protagonist in their unique masculine outfits. When asked by the protagonist why they dress that way, Aika accidentally reveals their true intentions by mentioning the protagonist's supposed intention to leave the school due to missing his male friends. Ryaiko also confesses that she heard this from the phone call. The protagonist clarifies that what he said on the phone is not his true intention, and he will continue to stay at the school. Later, Ryaiko seizes an opportunity to get closer to the boy by offering to give him private lessons in flower arranging. She knows that the protagonist struggles with this skill, and this allows her to spend more time alone with him. The innocent boy accepts the offer, thinking it will help him improve in that subject. When they later reunite with the other girls, Ryaiko tells the protagonist that it's time for them to leave. Aika asks where they are going, but Ryaiko says it's a secret, which makes Aika even more curious and eager to spend time with Ryaiko. Some mates come in to inform Ryaiko that her mother and brother have gone to visit her but not only her they also want want to see the protagonist. During the meeting with Ryaiko's mother and brother, it's revealed that the reason they called the protagonist was to meet the commoner who's sharing a room with their daughter. Ryaiko's brother becomes jealous and even threatens the protagonist, expressing his concern about having boys at the school and warning the protagonist not to interfere with his little sister. Ryaiko intervenes and convinces her brother to apologize for his behavior. Later in the conversation, Ryaiko's mother reveals that they have arranged a fiancé for her, named Satoshi. The protagonist is sent out of the meeting, and he shares his disapproval with the other waifus. He doesn't agree with the idea of forcing rich girls to marry someone they don't even know and is determined to nullify Ryaiko's arranged marriage. Ryaiko's absence from the commoners club has caused the group to lose cohesion, and despite the fact that she often bickered with Aika, they both miss her presence because at least she kept the group alive. One day, Aika decides to call Ryaiko to talk about her upcoming wedding. During their conversation, Ryaiko confesses that she misses their arguments. Eventually, Aika asks Ryaiko not to get married because she and the club need her. Ryaiko tearfully expresses her desire to go back to school but doesn't know how to convince her mother. Aika assures her that she and the club will come up with a plan to cancel the wedding. After some time, the club, along with Ryaiko's brother, agrees to help in preventing the wedding. To do this, they need to escape from school first because they can't do anything from inside. While trying to escape, they are spotted by Miyuki, who also wants to help rescue Ryaiko. Miyuki lets them out, and they all get into a car with Ryaiko's brother and some strongmen. They head to the location where Ryaiko and Satoshi's wedding is scheduled to take place. In the plan, the initial idea was to send the protagonist, but when Karen sees that there are armed guards, she decides to go first to test her sword skills because she's quite skilled with swords. She manages to eliminate all the security and creates an opening for her companions to pass through. Just then, more reinforcements arrive to block their path, but Karen defeats them as well. Ryaiko's brother heads to the door to confront a person who looks identical to Nicholas Majuro, and they have a battle. This distraction is used by the protagonist and the two other female companions to enter the castle. Once inside, they encounter some doors hanging from above that make their progress difficult. Fortunately, one of the strong men is there to assist Hakawa in reaching the control panel and deactivating these obstacles. Later, a transformer-like threat loomed, but Karen, dressed as a lady, came to the rescue by cutting off its leg and defeating it completely. After this, the protagonist continued on their journey and finally reached the location where Ryaiko was. There, the protagonist expressed their opposition to Ryaiko's marriage. However, Ryaiko's mother doesn't pay much attention to the protagonist's opinion. She believes that Ryaiko perfectly understands what's best for her, which is to marry the person of her choice. Aika also chimes in with her request to delay the marriage, mentioning how much she misses Ryaiko and how they shouldn't force her into marrying so young. A powerful speech against the marriage follows from Aika, concluding with a popular greeting. Still, the elderly woman remains indifferent to the opinions of the others. She even punishes them for being too intense. However, Ryaiko stands up and tells her mother that she doesn't want to get married. Her mother responds by saying that if she doesn't want to get married, she'll have to leave their house and live on the street. 
At this point, the protagonist steps in and offers to provide a place to stay at their house. They promise to convince their parents to adopt Riaiko, allowing her to become independent from her parents. Afterward, Riaiko's fiancé, whom we never even met, leaves. Riaiko's mother tells her that she will respect their parents' decisions, and now she can marry whomever she wants. The mother even suggests that her daughter should marry the main character as they are going to live together. This idea sends shockwaves among the group. Aika, Karen, and the girl express their disagreement with Ryaiko marrying the main character. Ryaiko's brother is also strongly against it, and he nearly landed a punch on the protagonist. In the end, Ryaiko and the protagonist do not get married, and the commoners club is reunited. That's it for this video, watch the following video, and I'll catch you in the next one.